every equation of the form y equals a number times x plus some other number is always going to produce a line in two dimensions. This is a very special form of linear equations. It's called the slope-intercept form. That's what we are going to now study, called slope-intercept form. All three of these equations down here, y equals 2x plus 2, y equals 2x minus 1, and y equals 2x minus 5 are in slope-intercept form. The three lines are already graphed here for you. The blue line goes with y equals 2x minus 5. The red line goes with y equals 2x minus 1. And the black line goes with y equals 2x plus 2. We want to analyze these three equations to see if that tells us something important about these three lines that we see. First, notice each of these equa equations has a 2 that the x is being multiplied by. Again, remember, x is our input variable and y is our output variable. So the input variable is being multiplied by 2 in each of these equations. While all three equations have this 2 in common, what do these three lines have in common? Well, if you look at it, you'll notice that they're all the same slope. These are three parallel lines, meaning they have the same slope. So that must mean that these twos right here represent the slope of the line. Let's look at another set of three lines to see if we can find some more commonalities. The blue lines equation is y equals 3x minus 1. The red lines equation is y equals 1 half x minus 1. And the black lines equation is y equals negative x minus 1. Based on the work we just saw in the previous slide, we know that the slope for this one is 3, which you can confirm. Rise 3, run 1. The slope for this one is m equals negative 1, which we can also confirm. Drop 1, write 1. And the slope on this one is 1 half, which we can also confirm in the same way. Rise 1, run 2. So the number that x is being multiplied by when y is isolated is the slope of the line. Let's now analyze these three lines for another common feature. Notice that all three of them cross right at this specific point right here. They all cross at the same exact point on the y-axis. Again, from previous studies, we know that the point at which a line crosses a y-axis is called its y-intercept. So each of these three lines has a y-intercept of 0, comma, negative 1. Now let's look at the three equations. What do the three equations have in common? The three lines have this y-intercept in common. What do the three equations have in common? Notice all of them have the minus 1 in them. Well, that minus 1, not only is that something they have in common, but also notice it's the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. We usually refer to this number that's being added on as the b value. So the connection here is that the number being added on to the variable quantity is precisely the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. Let's now summarize this. For every non-vertical line has an equation of the form y equals mx plus b where m is a specific number, specifically, it's the slope. As you can see, is rem you're reminded of that down here. It's precisely the slope. And b is also a specific number. But 0, comma b is the y-intercept of the line. Every single non-vertical line has an equation of this form. Vertical lines do not. We'll discuss them in a later video. The key to this form of a line, the slope-intercept form of the line, is that y must be totally isolated. If y is not totally isolated, then you cannot say that the number x is being multiplied is the slope, and the number that's being added on is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. That is only true if y is totally isolated. For example, if we had the equation 2y equals 6x plus 8, the slope of this line is not 6, 
and the y-intercept is not 0, 0,8 because y is not fully isolated. So with something like this, we'd first need to divide both sides by 2 to isolate y fully, which would give us y equals, don't forget the 2 divides into the 6x and into the 8 using the distributive property. You get y equals 3x plus 4. Now we can say the slope of this line is 3 and that it crosses the y-axis at 0, 0,4. See the coming video for more examples.